Hi, welcome to my latest video. And just like my previous one, which uh, centered on the Practica Nova, this time I'm looking again at another complete vintage 35mm single lens reflex camera. This time the world famous Zenith. In this particular case, it's the Zenith E, which denotes it's the camera fitted with a built in exposure meter. It's a selenium type exposure meter, so there's no batteries anywhere inside the camera whatsoever. Totally mechanical, takes 35mm film, and made, of course, in, just turn it around the right way and hopefully get the camera to focus on it for you where are we there we are made in the ussr united states of soviet russia which um most people would probably agree means that this thing is built like a tank um, it is not a heavy camera completely metal construction very basic in many ways even more basic than the East German Praktika which I featured recently. Shutter speeds, if I turn it round so you're looking at it as if you were using the camera, a more limited range of shutter speeds. It does go from a maximum of 500th of a second um, but we then only have a few intermediate speeds 250th, 125, 60th of a second 30th which is also the flash synchronization speed and B for bulb or timed exposures. It has on the front a single socket for flash units so whether they are bulb or flash um, they would both plug in to the front of the camera here. You would need a flash gun with a lead because the accessory shoe, as you probably already noticed, is what we call a cold shoe. There are no electronic contacts in there whatsoever. And on this particular camera, which obviously is a good few years old now, manufactured in the 1960s, the casting for the accessory shoe has at some stage in its life been broken and the previous owner has uh, glued it on top of the pentaprism. Normally you'd be able to slide this on and off the camera but uh, no longer sadly. In the same way that the Practica has the lever wind it's a standard layout but on the Zenith you can actually what we call inch the wind on mechanism. Okay you can either do one complete continuous sweep or several, whichever takes your fancy. The shutter release button is here in the middle and um, it is serrated. Uh, if you use the camera all day every day I know a number of people who had sore index finger pads from um, continually pressing down that shutter release uh, because it is quite sharp as indeed is the plastic end of the wind-on lever here. Um, if I just silhouette it against my finger, there we go, you might be able to see it's sort of chamfered but it's at 45 degrees and that's quite sharp the end of that plastic lever. So something to be aware of. It does have a mechanical self-timer um, so obviously you can either stand the camera on a wall or a bookshelf or a tripod obviously. Um, cock it, turn the delayed mechanism all the way around and then press the little release button here and it will give you around about 30 seconds of delay before it actually fires the shutter. There we go. Standard quarter inch tripod bush on the base. Um, it's offset right at one end of the base of the camera which is a little bit um, annoying if you're trying to balance this on a mini tripod. Um, it will be quite problematical for you because the, the, the weight is all centered around one end of the camera. 
Now, of course, the uh, one of the most important um, aspects of this camera is this lump of glass, this lens, which is fitted to it. Um, you will see dozens and dozens of videos on YouTube featuring this lens. It's the world famous Helios uh, 44-2, 58mm prime lens, f2 maximum aperture. Um, this one is one of the all black versions with um, green and uh, coloured lettering around the lens. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see that. And it's a preset lens. So let me pop it down here, wait for the camera to refocus. So you have uh, two rings around the front of the lens. The first one being click stopped from f2 down to f16 and the one immediately behind it is completely freely rotating. So the idea is as with any preset lens, you set your desired aperture, open the lens up to focus uh, using the second ring and then there's no need to refer to the aperture ring on the front. All you then do is turn this second one all the way as far as it will go and that will stop it down in this case to 5.6 and away you go. Simple as that really. One other thing which I'd like to point out, opening the camera relatively simple. You have a catch on the end plate of the camera. The layout is very straightforward. Um, film obviously pops in here, your film canister in here, here's your cloth focal plane shutter and uh, here are the sprockets which engage with the holes in the 35mm film and your take up spool is over here. These sprockets are actually quite sharp and if you don't load your film correctly um, these will actually tear through the perforations. I used to work in photographic retail many years ago and I can tell you as a matter of fact uh, that many many people had torn film. Um, now uh, most times you can actually load the film okay but because it has a mechanical uh, film counter up here okay um, which is driven by friction from the wind-on mechanism. This sometimes gets knocked and when you've got let's say 36 exposures on your length of film but this is only registering 34 then the instinctive thing to do is to wind the camera on and if you do that when the film is actually fully used up these sprocket drive gears will rip the film and that makes it very difficult and sometimes it actually rips the film to such an extent that it's torn completely off the out of the canister which means that to um, unload it safely it's a darkroom job or a changing bag okay so that's worth bearing in mind if you ever use this as a film camera um, freely available uh, people are asking silly money for the Helios lens now I am going to feature this lens on its own and run it through my uh, mirrorless camera over the next few days I've only just received this camera by the way so my intention I, I bought it for the lens I intend to use it um, I'm doubtful as to the performance of it yes these were a post-war copy of the Zeiss Biotar lenses but the the manufacturing tolerances were nothing like as good as the old Zeiss lenses and part of the attraction in these lenses is the softness around the edge uh, which does lead to this sort of swirly bokeh which people keep referring to I'm not sure how much of that I'm gonna see on my APS-C sensor camera but we will give it a go and I will feature this um, in a separate video uh, together with some example shots. Okay, so that's the actual camera. In terms of cost, by the way, this one actually cost me £12 complete. Uh, not only the body and lens for £12, and it is working, fully working. Um, it also came with the 
nearly as famous Everready case. Now for those of you who've never owned or touched a Zenith camera, um, I strongly recommend that the next time you get the opportunity, have a look and more importantly, have a smell of one of these cases. They are, I'm convinced, made of genuine Russian yak hide. They have a distinctive smell, very thick uh, leather. It's going to last for absolutely years and years. And you can see this one's done 40 odd years already. It's a bit rough around the edges, but it's complete and it would protect the camera if I ever wanted to use it in the field, so to speak. But you have to smell these things. Trust me, no other camera case has the same odour as a Zenith EverReady case. That's all for now, folks. I'll see you again soon.